You know, that touch of horsehair is so addictive. I've made three of them. And this one is from Kafka. I love it. It usually makes some, this is, so a man wrote this. He wrote, for a minute, she seemed to me, no wait. For a minute, she seemed to me to be steaming and to be filling the whole room with her vapor. My husband tells me that that's his idea of a nightmare. But I kind of like it. For a minute, she seemed to me to be steaming, to be filling the whole room with her vapor. No horse died. These are all like dressage horses. They just grow the horse tails right back. And then um, this is actually with thread. And this is the piece you have upstairs. Take all away from me, but leave me ecstasy. Like her hands are clenched. It's like, you know, there's loss there. You know, Take all away from me, but leave me. Just leave me ecstasy. This is how I stay out of trouble. But I mean, like the, the walls are so soft, and you know, it's just so soft, and the words up at the top. This is, I think, a 30 feet foot piece. And here's the piece that's upstairs. This is the culmination. I did two natural horsehair pieces. And then, I hate to say it, but we, we joked in the studio a lot about a horse of a different color. I'm so sorry. And, um, um, and at the end of the question and answer, I will share with you the language that's on, on this piece. Um, it's about fragility. It's called a fragile bridge. We're almost done. I'm just going to show you a few um, images of more wire work. I mean, here's a wire sweater for the wall. The soul has bandage moments. Uh, here's the guy upstairs. Air has no residence. Again, Dickinson. Um, I, I think of him as something like a, a birdhouse, you know, like the, or like a flute, like a man flute. You know, like the air comes through him, it comes out him. And he's carrying how ruthless are the gentle bronze. They're word messengers. They're made out of 14 layers of silk organza. It's called Florlick. I saw a piece by the choreographer Pina Bausch where one of her dancers was miming, licking the floor. I love the self-abnegation of that kind of flipness. What is inwardness? This is by Rilke, the poem. I think of the big W on her chest also like a big set of lungs, as if she breathes in the intention and she breathes out the language. What is inwardness? Wonderstruck. When I was on my last uh, meditation retreat, I, um, I was given the experience of a very lengthy engagement with bliss. And you know, 15 minutes of it is great, but I had it for seven hours, and it was really a little scary. It was like a kind of spiritual Viagra. But um, <laughs> so that's what I did. This piece was about that experience of a perfect paralyzing bliss. The words are from Dickinson. Um, and this dress is the sister to the one you have upstairs. This one is called Dress of War and Sorrow. My husband is a video journalist, and he was embedded in Iraq. So um, I made this while he was over there. And, um, and here is our kite team. You have the kite. This was, we made this at the University of, um, no, at the Maryland Institute. There's Scott Draken, our fabulous kite maker from the Draken, Scott Skinner from the Draken Foundation, and the wonderful Gail Deary and her class. So we made this kite with a Buddhist figure, with an open heart of a lotus flower, with the language of Emily Dickinson pouring through his veins. And here he is riding up in the sky, an object in an objectless ceiling. Um, and this work I did for only one venue previous to this. This is practically a virginal show. Um, so here we have Rise and more rise. The language on this figure is the language that I collected in Winston-Salem. So the language of the visions that I collected there is on these banners. I, the room was on fire. I heard a voice. She tells me her secrets. They're written on the wall upstairs. I wanted to make a little red woman on fire. 